Welcome to the Richard Lloyd USA YouTube channel. I'm Richard Lloyd. Today I'm going to be showing you, a, well, basically a hack. Uh, I was asked in the comments uh, section below uh, how to expand the number of ports on a router. Uh, the user had a router with four Ethernet ports on the back and they were fully populated. He plugged in four different devices into those uh, ports and he needed a fifth. And uh, I said, okay, uh, you could buy a switch and do that. And, uh, you know, you'd have at least five uh, extra ports. But uh, then I thought about it and asked him how many he needed. He said he only needed one uh, and he had a spare router. So, uh, to, in, it, so there is a way to hack uh, a router into just being a switch. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that on this video. And uh, basically what you're gonna end up with is a uh, router that is you know basic deconfigured down to just a switch and if you have a fully populated uh, four row um, or, or sorry four port uh, router uh, after doing this video you'll have two more free ports to plug things into okay so let's get on with uh, configuring this router now the first thing we, we need to do with any router and and by the way this will work with any two routers uh, and preferably if you have a gigabit uh, uh, Ethernet uh, router uh, as your primary. You want a gigabit Ethernet router as uh, or as your hack one. But if you don't, if you have a hundred megabit like this one is, it'll work just fine. It'll just be a little slower. You'll still get two extra ports and it'll still work. Okay. So first thing you need to do with your spare router or your old router is to reset it to factory settings. And the way you do that with this one, it's a TP Link, is you hold a reset button down for. 10 seconds or so and it will reset. Now your router may be made by somebody else or a different manufacturer and there might be a different reset procedure. So just go to your web page for that router, uh, support web page for that router and find out how to do a factory research, reset. It's really important that you do that because you don't want any old configuration messing this up. So uh, going back to the factory deset, uh, reset uh, does uh, basically t take the router back to the day you took it out of the box and that's the safest setting so here uh, I'm just going to power it up and after it's done being powered up uh, what I'm going to do is hold the reset button down for about 10 seconds and you'll see it do a full Christmas tree on the lights and then after that it'll be reset so uh, I think it's been on long enough to be reset so I'm going to hold down the button there we go Yeah, I'm pressing the right button. Ah, there we go. You saw that Christmas tree going across and that's it. It should be reset at this point. So step one, complete. Reset the router to a default factory setup. Uh, uh, so next thing we need to do is disconnect the computer that you're going to use to configure this router from your main network. In my case, I'm connected through Wi-Fi. So I'm just gonna go down here to the Wi-Fi icon and Click on the Wi-Fi button here and turn it off. Now, if you're connected through Ethernet, you want to disconnect the cable from the router or from the back of your computer, and uh, then it'll be disconnected from your network. Uh, next thing you're going to do is take a, pat a patch cable like this, uh, Ethernet patch cable, and connect it to your Ethernet port and then to the back of one of the LAN ports on the back of the, the router. There'll be one, or in this case, one of the orange ports. Uh, the internet port is not used in this hack and we shouldn't need to use it. Uh, in fact, it wouldn't work anyway, so don't use that. And if you're gonna use this as a permanent solution, maybe put a piece of tape over the internet port on this router on the, the, that we're hacking. Uh, so nobody ever plugs into that, because it won't work. So uh, yeah, next thing, ethernet cable into the back of the router and ethernet cable in the back of your computer. Now, if you don't have an Ethernet adapter on your computer, you're only connecting through Wi-Fi, then a really good solution is an Ethernet to USB adapter like this one. I bought this one at uh, uh, Amazon for less than $15 and it's a gigabit Ethernet uh, to USB 3. And it works really, really well and I'm really impressed by it. So if you don't have an Ethernet adapter either on your computer or on your laptop, uh, this is a great solution. Actually, it even works on the Raspberry Pi for me, so that's really cool. Uh, and you don't have to open up your computer to put a new network card into it. You just plug it into the USB port and off you go. Uh, so, uh, again, we've got an Ethernet cable plugged into the back of the router and an Ethernet cable plugged into the back of your computer. So, right there, got that going, it's powered up. 
and lit up here so we're good uh, so next thing we need to do is go to that router and configure it so the way you find out the IP address of your router is by uh, actually going down here clicking right clicking your network icon open network and internet settings click on that here we're going to go to change adapter options and then you'll see your network connections and here you'll see that I have three network connections and only one of them is connected and that's the one we want to go to the one that's singly connected go to status and then details and that tells you a bunch of numbers but the one that really matters here is the IPv4 default gateway right here it's 192.168.0.1 now yours may be different that's why I'm showing you how to find out what your default uh, sorry uh, gateway is because yours may be different and uh, in this case this router is uh, on 192.168.0.1 uh, some routers are on 192.168.1.1 or other numbers but this will tell you exactly where it is so this is good to know and hit close and close and I'll close all this stuff up and then we're gonna open up a browser and go look at it so here we're gonna type in 192.168.0.1 and then hit enter and there's the router configuration page and now in this case it's a TP link and the default username and password for this is admin admin since we set it to the factory uh, settings then it's going to have the default password if you don't know what yours is for yours and it's not a TP link go to your manufacturer's website it's always there or Google your router and say default password and usually you'll come up with it and uh, in this case it's admin and then admin again all lowercase and then we're in here now once the run wants to run a quick setup because hey we just reset it and it assumes it just came out of the box so we're not going to do that here we're just going to hit exit okay first thing we're going to do go to network and go to LAN we're not doing anything with WAN it's it's you know uh, not necessary now we're not using the WAN port now one of the things I saw in these videos that they don't show you to do is this step this step is really important my primary router is on the, the same IP address as this router would be 192.168.0.1 what that means is that if I left this without changing it as soon as I plug this router in it would conflict with my primary router and no one would be able to browse the internet anymore in fact it wouldn't work very well at all it would create what they call an IP, uh, IP conflict and either this device would not work or the other router would not work or they both would not work so we don't want that right so what we're going to do here to avoid that is just chase change that last number from one to two now if yours is 192.168.1.1 right then just change the number after the 168.122 uh, like this okay so uh, for instance if we had 1.1 then there would be 1.2 okay let's change it to that uh, but in our case here we're keeping it on 0 0.2 because the numbers uh, from here uh, from 192 to 168.0 uh, 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 that's the network address and the 2 is the actual node address so I want this router to be on the same network as all the rest of my devices and by doing putting it on 192.168.0 it's on that network now if you had a 192.168.1.1 then you would put it on 192.168.1.2 okay enough of that I know it's technical but just follow that direction you should be fine here we're gonna hit save and hit okay now this is one of the steps in the videos that I watched that they didn't tell you to do so if you got lucky and it, your primary router was on something else other than 192.168.0.1 then nothing would have happened but if you didn't then it, this solution the, the, either the, the the old router you're trying to set up as a, as a switch wouldn't have worked or both of them wouldn't have worked and then you're just disconnected and say well that's a bummer but in this case that that's step one okay uh, now step two is going to be disabling uh, the wireless access on this router we don't want the wireless uh, we don't want Wi-Fi on this router uh, we want it off all right now if you want to see how to set up a second router in, in a way that Wi-Fi is shared I have more videos on that and I'll put a card up there for that somewhere but waiting for this to reboot and 
pretty well think we're going to be there. Now, when this reboots, it's not going to be at 192.168.0.1. It's going to be at 192.168.0.2. Now, it automatically knew that, and it changed it for us. That's nice. But if it, yours doesn't, just put 192.168.0, and whatever number you put after. Like I said, I chose 2. It could be 10. It could be 20. Whatever you wanted to choose, right? But 2 is pretty safe. So here we're going to log back in again. Admin. Admin. Log in. Now, routers have things in different places, so you're going to have to search around to see how to turn your wireless off. Uh, let's go here to wireless, wireless settings, and uh, so here it is. Enable wireless router radio. Well, we don't want Wi-Fi on this router. We're just using it as a switch. So here we go, and I guess we're going to do that as well. And I don't think there's any other place here where we can change it. Nope, that's it. So that should disable Wi-Fi. And uh, weird, uh, that's all that happens. Let's see. Let's go to security and then back again. Yeah, there it is. Not much happened there. It really di didn't say much. And uh, when you turn your Wi-Fi back on, if this should not be on. So let's, uh, at this point, let's do that. Let's see if we're off. Uh, we've turned that off successfully. And we'll look through the list of uh, routers, and nope, not showing up. So we have it here. So let's turn Wi-Fi back off here. And that doesn't really matter, but we'll just turn it off. We'll come back to that. So now we've got the IP address set. We've got the Wi-Fi uh, turned off. The next thing you want to turn off is DHCP right here. Now DHCP hands out IP addresses to the network, and if you, you know, your primary router has that function already on. If you turn two DHCP servers on the same router, uh, sorry, on the same network, it will be mayhem. You'll have all sorts of conflicts, all sorts of problems. Trust me, I've seen it. I've been called into a network uh, to find out why it was working so poorly. They couldn't figure it out. And what I found out was that somebody plugged in a router into the same network with DHCP enabled, and it was handing out IP addresses to all sorts of stuff, as well as the primary router was. It was mayhem. So it was a weird one, but you know you don't want to do that in your own network. So what we're going to do here is turn off DHCP. And again, you don't really need to know the technical uh, aspects of it, because you know if you just do this, it will work. So disable it, hit save, and then hit OK. And it says, you know, you, it will not take effect until you, re you reboot this device. Whatever yours tells you to do, do it. I'm doing it here. Reboot. Boy, three times it asked me. There we go. And basically at this point, we've turned off all the functions of this router that, uh, you know, basically turned it into a router. It will no longer be a router. It's just going to be a switch. A router is a, configura a, a conglomeration of different uh, devices. So... Uh, a switch is one of them, and what we've done to this router now is just turned it into primarily just a switch. So it's restarting, and now it won't give me an IP address uh, because the HCP is off. So I should still be able to see it because I should still have the old uh, DHCP address. So, so at this point, the DHCP server is off, the router will reboot, and then the next thing we need to do is just physically connect it to the uh, other router. And in the next segment, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so you've reset and configured your secondary router that we're gonna use to add ports to your primary router. And you're ready to go with that. It's, it's internally set up correctly. Then we're gonna plug in a patch cable, one of these. And if you don't have one of these, I'll put links for, for the, all this gear in the video description below, and you can get it from Amazon. Um, and those are affiliate links. And that helps me, and it doesn't cost you any extra uh, to use them. So do me a favor and use them. So we're going to use a patch cable. I'm going to assume that you've got four items or four plugs in your router already, uh, or all your router ports fully populated. So you can't add any more, and this is why you're doing this video. The internet is uh, going to be plugged in. This internet port is going to be plugged into your modem. So what we're going to do is disconnect one of your devices that's connected to your router. That'll give you a free port. We'll take the patch cable, plug it in there, make sure it clicks and locks so it doesn't come out. And 
Then we're going to take the secondary router we configured and plug it into one of the LAN ports. There we go. And that's, it doesn't matter which one, it, it's, it's irrelevant. And of course, we're going to plug in the device we disconnected from the primary router to connect this router. Okay, so in, into the LAN port, you get a click, make sure they're locked, they are. And now you're ready to go and you have two extra ports here. Uh, to use any way you wish. Uh, you can add a printer or whatever network device you want to plug into these ports uh, from there, from here on. All right, we physically connected it uh, and now it should be working perfectly. Anything you plug into the back of that router on the two ports that are left, if you're fully populated, should work just fine. Uh, otherwise, you just have, you'll have three spare, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, ports added to your system to put more into it, right? So beautiful solution, works great, it's cheap, it's a hack. Um, if you're serious, if you want like five or, or you know, eight or 16 or, you know, whatever number of uh, ports on your router, you would really uh, go with a switch, which uh, I'll put a link for those switches in the, in the video description below. And I may do a video on how to attach a switch to your router, which is not a big deal. It's actually way simpler than this. And uh, last and not least, before we leave, uh, let's turn the uh, uh, Wi-Fi back on here. Make sure that you know you get connected back. If you didn't, uh, if you disconnected yourself from a LAN using an Ethernet cable, plug that back in again, and you should be off to the races. And that's how you hack a old router like this one to become a switch to give you a couple extra ports on your network. All right, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out in some way. Do me a huge favor and give me a thumbs up at the bottom right. Uh, also, uh, if you want to see further content from me uh, when I posted it, uh, do a, uh, subscribe to my channel, click the, uh, the um, notification bell, make sure you do that. That way you'll be notified every time I put up a new video and then you can watch it at, at your own leisure. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.